it's okay poisson's ratio all right i think y'all already know this if you stretch a material its diameter decreases a little bit maybe y'all know think that know that if you compress a material sometimes its diameter increases and so the ratio let's get a, a good definition poisson's ratio is the ratio of latitudinal strain latitudinal strain to longitudinal strain longitudinal strain the longitudinal is the axial direction the long way latitudinal is going to be the diameter so this is like diameter strain this is like length strain let's write a definition a good definition this uh poisson's ratio is this new okay this v you know this new is equal to negative latitudinal strain over longitudinal strain all right what do you think latitudinal strain is change in diameter over diameter listen up y'all and longitudinal is change in length over length all right you don't get a formula sheet for test one that's something to memorize to know the the, the d's are over the l's are kind of alphabetical order maybe how i think about it change in diameter over diameter over changing length over length right so here, here's what most you know nine times out of ten is going to happen if you know the strain and you know the materials poisson's ratio you can find its change diameter or its new diameter you know using this equation okay uh different materials have different poisson's ratio and this will just be given uh, I'll give this to you on the test and in, in the um, homework. You, I don't remember if this is in the back of the book, um, but we're talking about 0 0.3, 0 0.27, 0 0.15, 0.31. Yeah, that, 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 there you go. Now he's located on back cover. Okay, so this is really just one tiny step sometimes. Part D on this problem where we're doing all this stuff, finding the length finding the strain um but also we can we can find the diameter change diameter it's probably not going to change very much you know this change diameter might be very very small 0 0.0024 millimeters or, or something okay. that's it let's don't over uh complicate that poisson's ratio new is delta D over D divided by delta L over L. Why that negative? Why that negative? Because one is stretching, like the length is getting larger, but the diameter would be decreasing. And so otherwise, our Poisson's ratios would be negative. So we just put that negative in the formula of Poisson's ratio, so all our Poisson's ratios are positive. Okay. All right, next. Yeah, let's work out this problem. Let's work out this problem. Uh, we, we can find a change in volume. I'm not gonna do that. It's a very, 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 very tiny change in volume. Um, all right, let's say we've got an acrylic plastic rod. Uh, I need to kind of give you like the, a few values for this. Um, the, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. The, the E is given, but I want to give you the yield stress. Uh, let's say it's a 100 MPa. And the Young's modulus, or the modulus of elasticity is 2.7 GPa. Poisson's ratio is 0.5. Okay, so we've got an acrylic plastic rod, originally 200 millimeters long, 15 millimeters in diameter. But then we put an axial load of 300 newtons to it, Let's determine its change in length, change in diameter. That's all we'll do. All right. So, C 
seeing those forces, we've been dealing with stresses. You know, we're not really looking at forces anymore. We're taking those forces. Let's calculate the stress. Um, we can do that pretty easily. The stress would be force divided by the area that it's acting, 300 newtons. The area, it's 15 millimeters in diameter, uh, pi by 4, 15 millimeters squared. So 1.678 MPA. 1.678 MPA. Now, if you know the stress, then you can find the strain by looking at the stress strain curve, right? You know the stress, you can find the strain by looking at the stress strain curve. Might have to interpolate or something. Okay. Or, or if you know the stress and you know it's in the elastic region, right? that's why I need to give you the yield stress for you to know that the stress is less than the yield stress, it's in the elastic region, then how can you convert from stress to strain or strain to stress? Uh, knowing the slope or knowing the modulus of elasticity, uh, E is stress over strain in the elastic region, in the elastic region, and don't always assume it's in the elastic region, uh, but if your stress is less than the yield, then yes, you're in the elastic region. All right, so we're going to plug in 2.7 right here. We're going to plug in 1.678 right there, and we're going to get the strain. And then from the strain, it doesn't ask for the strain. It asks for its change in length, so we'll figure that out. So I'm going to plug in 2.7, but I'm going to be very careful with my units, though. Uh, this is... 2.7 GPA, this is MPA, so I'll say 2700 MPA equals 1.678 MPA over strain. So the strain is 0 0.0006288. I can leave it unitless or I could say inches per inch. Um, that's not exactly what it's asking for. It's not asking for its strain. It's asking for its delta L, right? Change in length. It's asking for its delta L. So I know the definition for strain is delta L over L. So, you know, multiply this L to the other side of our equation. So I need to take this point zero 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 six two eight eight inches per inch and multiply it times the length 200. Why, why am I doing inches? Millimeters, millimeters, millimeters. Yeah, sorry, millimeters. Doesn't exactly matter, but uh, multiply it times 200 millimeters. So the delta L is 0.126 millimeters. Uh, and, and be careful, because I might not ask for its change in length, I might ask for its length. What is its length? 200.126 millimeters. Okay, so, so answer the question that this one's just asking for change in length to 0.1266 is the answer. All right, 0.1266 is the change in length. All right, how about the change in diam diameter? Well, if we know about the change in length and we want to know the change in diameter, Poisson's ratio. So this is just kind of step. Two, I know Poisson's ratio is delta D over D, delta L over L. Uh, so if I know this value is 0.4, delta D over, its original diameter is 15, over, and I could do delta L over L, but this is, that's what strain is, 0 0.0006288. Be careful with fractions on top of fractions, but y'all can handle that. Change of diameter is negative 0 0.00377 millimeters. Did it ask for its diameter? Because if it asked for the diameter, it'd be 15 minus that. So, you know, point or 14.99, you know, that'd be its new diameter. It says change of diameter. Okay, so real easy, and I don't know, hard ways to lose points on the test is just not answering the right question.
I'm asking for a strain. I'm asking for length, changing length, diameter, changing diameter. All right. 